If your pool is clear, it is perfect. And I don't, I don't even really know how to explain it. Just look, look at this. I really love underwater photography for three reasons. Number one, it takes what I usually do anyway, storytelling, and exaggerates it. Because imagine having breakfast underwater. It's just really cool. Number two, clothing underwater. It can take an everyday dress and make it spectacular because you're just not used to seeing everyday clothing underwater. Number three, the wow factor. You just don't see a lot of underwater photography, so it just naturally stands out. I would suggest get in early if you're a photographer. It's kind of like Bitcoin for photography. Get in early, start doing it, get great at it, and your photos will definitely stand out on social media. So before I show you how to do it, I wanna show you what you need to be able to do it. You could use either a phone or a professional camera, both with an underwater case. I use a professional camera. I've used a phone, I prefer the camera, of course. If you wanna use your phone underwater, then get a $50 case from Amazon and have your kids jump in the water and go under with them and just have a lot of fun because you can get shots with them doing cannonballs into the pool and then you snap the shot when they're splashing all around. It's a lot of fun, it's a bonding experience. I highly recommend it. Two notes about using a phone. Number one, when it's in the case, it can't recognize it when you tap on the screen to take the photo, so you have to use the side button. And number two, if you can, lock the focus when you're out of water and then you and your kid go down together and stay in the same position to take the photo because sometimes if it's on autofocus, the phone has a hard time locking on the subject. If you want more control over your photos underwater, then get an underwater housing. And often you can actually rent the underwater housing rather than buying it. That's what I did. The first several underwater photo shoots I did, I used a rental housing and then when I liked it enough, I ended up buying one. It's gonna take a lot of trial and error for you to get used to using underwater housing with your camera, but I wanna give you two pieces of advice. Number one, use a wide lens. And everything else I've said in this course has always been about long lenses, but in this case, wide is much better. I use a 24 millimeter lens underwater because the closer you can get to the subject underwater, the less particulates there are in the way and the clearer the photo will be. Don't worry so much about depth of field and whether or not everything is in focus because it's, it's water. So everything kind of fades away. Really all you're focusing on is being able to lock focus on your subject. And to do that, you need to get closer. Number two, I set my exposure to aperture priority. That means I can adjust my aperture before I put the camera in the case and I set it at F4 and then everything else is done for me automatically, the shutter speed and the ISO. That way I can go underwater, not worry about exposure and just think about composition. What happens next? I talk to my subject and figure out what sort of shot am I taking. For me, it breaks down into two things. Am I doing some sort of cool fashion photo shoot underwater or am I telling a story? Because I'm not really interested in just having somebody go underwater in a bathing suit and take that photo. What I wanna do is recreate everyday life, but underwater. So if I decide I wanna do a fashion photo shoot underwater, I have the model dress as if it's a fashion photo. For example, a bright red flowing dress with heels. My favorite. That is just so cool because the red pops against the blue of the water and you just do not expect to see somebody in heels and in a dress underwater and the dress is flowing everywhere. Number two, recreating everyday life, telling stories. I love doing this. So we'll grab a table, we'll grab chairs, we'll grab books. Just realize you're gonna ruin most things if you put them underwater. So use outdoor furniture and put it underwater. In that case, I also have the people dress in everyday clothing. How to direct your model to go underwater for the first time. Most people aren't used to being photographed underwater. The number one thing is, can they open their eyes underwater? Because then it really allows you to recreate everyday life. Here's a note that I give every person before they go underwater. You have to exhale as you go down because what's gonna happen is you get underwater and you're buoyant. So you just float, you can't get down to the bottom. But if you exhale, it allows you to go down. If you have somebody who absolutely cannot open their eyes underwater, come up with a concept that involves sunglasses. That way they can keep their eyes closed, but you can't tell. So for example, get a deck chair and a pina colada and a book and sunglasses and sunscreen and have them look like they're at the beach. Another good option is to give the subject a weight belt. Don't make it too heavy, because they'll freak out a little bit. I use 15 pounds around my waist, but even five or 10 pounds will help you get down. 
The problem with a weight belt, of course, is you can see it. So what I would recommend is you put the weight belt under whatever clothing you're gonna wear underwater. A challenge to doing underwater photography for me is that it's actually pretty hard to see and it makes it even harder when your goggles fog up. So I get defogging spray and I use it. It works kind of, but you're gonna have to reapply that a lot. So the number one thing is try to get yourself a good pair of goggles that doesn't fog up all the time. Because if you can't see clearly, you can't take the photo. I'm gonna go under, get set, wait three seconds, and then come down. A lot of doing underwater photography is luck. I can see it, but I'm going because I'm not really sure if the focus is locking and I can't really tell what I'm getting. A lot of times, I'm not even relying on the screen. I'm pointing the camera at the dancer, but I'm actually watching the dancer without using the screen because it's easier to see them. Most of the shots that I absolutely love, I didn't even know I got until I started editing. So the key there is just take a ton of photos. I don't practice the poses outside and then go in the pool because the pool is so different because you're floating. So there's no way to practice floating unless you get in there and you do it. So we might talk about the kind of pose, for example, hey, would you like to try an arabesque underwater? Would you try this or that? But really you don't know what it looks like until you get under and you do it. One of the things to try when you're underwater is take advantage of the fact that you're floating. So the poses can be more like ethereal and soft because you're, you're literally floating. So you don't have to do crazy flexibility wax or anything. Really simple, beautiful poses work the best. Start simple and build from there. Okay, let's talk about light. Light is the big factor in underwater photography. Basically, there's two kinds of light. You have, you've noticed I haven't mentioned anything about the ocean or a lake or a river because I've never done it. So if you're gonna try that, I would suggest you gotta get to an ocean that's really calm and really clear, and the only one I've heard of that does well with that is the Caribbean. So I haven't gone to the Caribbean and I haven't taken any underwater photos there, but if you can get there, that would be awesome. But I'm gonna keep talking about the pool. Now let's talk about light, because light is the huge factor for underwater photography. Assuming you're using an outdoor pool, there's two kinds of light, direct sunlight and overcast light. Because once you get into nighttime, unless you bring in underwater lights, it's just too dark and you can't shoot. There's also two kinds of pools, murky and clear. Salt water tends to be a little murkier. Chlorinated pools tend to be a little clearer, but it also has to do with how often you clean it. And they both actually have advantages and disadvantages. So let's first talk about a sunny day. Sunny day, the sun is beating down the pool. There's a lot of light underwater. If it's a clear pool, you're gonna see a lot of spackled light. So there's texture of light and shadows all over the body. This is my least favorite kind of underwater photo. I really don't like it, but it's easy to grab focus because there's so much light under there that the photos tend to be really sharp. If the pool is murky on a sunny day, that's actually really kind of cool. Murky is hard to see, so it's a more frustrating kind of situation to shoot in, but when you get the shot, it's gorgeous because what happens is because it's murky but the sun is coming down, it creates these sun rays underwater that can almost look like a spotlight on your subject. So when that works, it is gorgeous. But when you're shooting with murky water, the shots end up being gorgeous but you have to take twice as many because so many of them are out of focus or you can't even see the subject at all. Now for overcast light. If your pool is clear, it is perfect. It is my favorite thing on earth when it comes to underwater photography. A clear pool with an overcast day, the light is even, you can see your subject, and it, the colors, ah, uh, I don't, I don't even really know how to explain it. Just look, look at this. So if you have a pool, clean the pool, wait for an overcast day, and go underwater, because you're gonna love the photo. If you are interested in taking some really fun underwater photos, all you need is access to a pool, a phone, and a waterproof case for your phone, which you can find on Amazon. If you wanna use your professional camera underwater, you're gonna need to buy underwater housing for your camera. For my underwater photography, I use professional housing, which I put my camera inside of this. However, you can get very similar shots with either 
a waterproof case for your phone, which you can get on Amazon, or a GoPro. No matter what you're using, unless you can see really well underwater, you're gonna need a mask. Also, it's really hard to stay underwater for long. And I'm not talking about holding your breath, I'm talking about the buoyancy. The buoyancy just keeps throwing you back up. So I use a weight belt. And I usually use about 15 pounds of weight around my waist. That allows me to get down there and stay down there, but it doesn't keep me down there so I can get back up safely. Might want to start practicing holding your breath, by the way, because the longer you can stay down there, the more opportunities there are to get awesome photos. Also, I use a wetsuit. It's not flattering. I'm not proud of myself. Not crazy about the way I look in a wetsuit. However, it keeps me warm. And even if the pool is warm, eventually, if you're in there long enough, it gets cold. So grab yourself a wetsuit.